All right. Thank you so much. That was amazing. I loved this whole morning with the um, amount, the immense amount of information that we received from our elders. Um, it's invaluable. So thank you so much, both of you, uh, this morning for that sharing of knowledge. Today, uh, we have with us uh, a few members in person of our Region 10 Tribal Operations Committee. Um, this, it, uh, this includes members of our National Operations Committee as well. Um, we have some folks joining us online. Uh, I see our chairman, Mr. Ray Paddock, is there. And I would invite any of our other members who are joining us across the miles to please uh, turn on your cameras so we can show your faces as well uh, as we do this round table. This is going to be uh, just a kind of an informal uh, request to have folks who are joining us to pose any questions, um, make any comments or statements, share any uh, information you'd like to share about your region, uh, your tribe with your representatives. We will have a short, a very short introduction from each of our representatives, so you know who they are and, and who they represent. And uh, then we'll open it up to questions. And so if you do have questions, please enter them in the chat. And if there are no questions, then we will have no problem in filling up this time because we all like to share and talk about where we are from and what we're doing in our regions or in our subregions. So I'm going to pass the mic off to first uh, Chairman Paddock, if you'd like to start, do your quick introduction, and then I'll pass it off to um, Gayla Hoseth, because I don't see any other folks online. Robert, oh, okay. I'm sorry, I don't see you on the screen. Okay. He was he just on. Having... Yep, there... Hi, Robert. I know he's been having issues with his internet too, so we may have folks who can't turn their cameras on. Just wanted to acknowledge that. So we'll start with Ray, then we'll go into Robert. You can introduce yourself. Oh, there's Rosalyn from Oregon, although that is misleading. She's <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure Oregon hasn't gotten tropical yet. So um, we'll pass it off to the folks who are on the screen first, and then Gayla will, will be ready with the mic when, when you're done. Thank you, Randy. Good morning, everyone. Uh, good to see you all again, and uh, what a morning so far. Uh, it's been a great week. Um, <clears throat> my name is Raymond Paddock. I am the environmental coordinator for the Central Council of Clinton and Haida, uh, located in Aquan Territory, also known as Juneau, Alaska. Um, we are, Clinton and Haida is a federally recognized tribe, but we have the unique position of being a regional tribe, if you will. So we don't necessarily have one homeland area in the Southeast area as we're a representation of uh, Clinton and Haida people all over the world, but located in Juneau, representing Southeast Alaska people. I'm also the, as stated by Randy, I'm also the uh, tribal co-chair for the Region 10 RTOC. Ms. Chief, thank you. Thank you, Ray. Oh, the other, I guess, Robert, um, if you wanted to go next. <laughs> Good hey, morning, everybody. Yeah, sorry, I can't barely turn on my um, camera here because the Wi-Fi has been kind of hectic all week for me here in Anchorage and Diamond, Hill, Diamond Center Hotel. Anyway, my name is Robert Mayers out of Pilot Station. With, I work for, with the uh, Pilot Station Traditional Village as the ARPA coordinator. And uh, I am um, also on our uh, tribal council. <laughs> Uh, traditional council village uh, council member, sorry, <clears throat> as the vice president, and I am the alternate for Eric Alstrom for Alaska position three. Thank you. Uh, Rosalie. 
Yeah, good morning, everyone. I know, as Randy said, my picture is uh, very misleading. I just like a little bit of mystery. <laughs> yeah, so anyway, my name is Roslyn Luenya, and I'm the director for the Natural Resources Department for the Ku Confederated Tribes of Coos, Lower Amco, and Cislo Indians in Oregon. Um, the alternate rape for Oregon and of course, Heather Bartlett is our representative for Oregon. So I'm so happy to be here today. And I've been here since Monday and I've enjoyed all the sessions. I'm learning a lot. And so I just am looking forward to the deliberations for today as well. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. And I don't see anybody else on camera um, that are from our R talk. I'd like to introduce myself. Um, my name is Gayla Hassett, and I'm the second chief of Chuggan Tribal Council located in Dillingham, Alaska. And um, Cassandra Johnson is my alternate. And we represent the Bristol Bay and Southwest tribes um, in, the, in the region there in Alaska. I serve on um, the National Tribal Operations Committee for Alaska Position 2. And with that um, being serving on the National Tribal Caucus um, for it's called NTOC, um, we're able to gather the information um, from our local regions that we do represent, bring those issues here to the RTOC Region 10 level of the concerns that we're having in our region, and then um, bringing those issues to the national um, table of discussion and talking about these environmental issues and concerns that are affecting all of us. And so the work that we do is um, very important. And if you could kind of see our um, this year's theme, what we have, it really does speak a lot to um, really who we are as people and, and what it is that we're protecting in our environment. I'll turn that on to Cassandra now. Waka Chinachit, Cassandra Johnson, uh, born and raised in Dillingham. I'm a Chakayong tribal member, and I am also work for Bristol Bay Native Association as the environmental program manager. And I serve as Gala's alternate on our talk, like she has mentioned. So with that, I will give it to Shauna. And Sarita Chemaka Shana Larson, Sukhbi on my mom's side from the village of Palawik, also known as Port Graham. I'm Atna on my dad's side from the village of Nidaniana, also known as Chickaloon Village. And I am serving on the R Talk as the alternate for Ray Paddock. I serve as the special um, projects manager for the tribe at Chickaloon Village. And uh, with that, I'll pass it on to my neighbor. Thank you. Hi, I'm Bill Hand. I'm the tribal administrator for the native village of Klutika in Copper Center, Alaska. Um, I'm also a member of the NTOC with Gala. And we are here to bring your environmental concerns and your concerns to the federal level with our partners. Um, and I'm glad to be here. Thank you, Jeanette. Good morning. Um, my name is Miranda Hom. I am the uh, Craig Tribal Association environmental manager and tribal member. Um, I also serve as the RTOC Alaska rep for the Kuskokwim and Southeast tribes. Um, happy to be here. Thank you. Hi, good morning. My name is Eric Alstrom. I'm from St. Mary's, Alaska. I work for the EP to Vangeski as the environmental director and I'm the RTOC Alaska position three representative for upper, middle, lower Yukon, the interior, and the Copper River region. And here's Lee Wong. Bishaya Wong was. Bishaya Wong was Zonga Bechku. Good morning, everyone. Lee Wong Tyler, Sishon Bannock Tribes, Fort Hall, Idaho, tribal council member, and also. Uh, I help uh, represent with the Upper Snake River Tribes, the USERT, and also uh, I'm with our talk here, Regional 10, representing uh, Eastern Oregon, and Eastern Washington, and Southeast Idaho. And also I'm with the National Tribal Caucus 
under the American Environmental Office, under the United States Environmental Protection Agency of America. So I hope we can get something accomplished. And we've been talking about this for years, and as this has been established, our, our leaders in the past. And so uh, there's so much out there. Our water is the main one, protect our water of life. You know what's raining out there? What's coming inside of it? Pollution? We don't know. So we need to protect our salmon. It goes on and on and on. It's good to be in the country, my uh, relative people, the, the Yukut Nation, Upper Columbia River people. So they need salmon too. Thank you very much. If we shouldn't be divided like America is, two wings, one body, like the great eagle. Thank you. Tots may we. Uh, good morning, my name is Aaron Miles. Uh, I work as the natural resource manager for the Nez Perce tribe, and uh, I am the vice chair for our talk, and um, I guess uh, I represent the Idaho uh, um, as a region for uh, Region 10, and uh, some of the issues that we have are, um, have to do with the four lower snake dams. That's the biggest push we have is to uh, breach the dams, they're right in um, our part of the, um, in Nez Perce country. And uh, the, most of the mortality takes place from, um, from the reservoirs. Uh, the slow moving water kills the fish. It's too warm for them. Uh, the smolts going back to the ocean or going to the ocean and then the adults coming, coming uh, home to spawn. So it's a big deal for us to uh, reduce the mortality and, and, um, the salmon are important to our people. Thank you. So we do have one uh, question in the chat. And just a reminder, you can put questions in the chat box or you can raise your hand under the reactions. Um, question for Bill Han. What do you think is the biggest issue facing people of your region? Well, that's a good question, and and it's. I would say the region that I represent in Alaska is a different region than where I live, so I got to differ differentiate between those two places. Um, but statewide, with Alaska, um, climate adaptation and climate resilience has to be our biggest topic right now. Every part of our environment's changing in Alaska, from our water to our ground. To the air, and we can, we need to learn to adapt to that. So I say adapting to the ever-changing climate would be our our biggest focus right now. Um, yeah, Janan, thank you for the question. Oh, okay. Well, you know, on the on the subject of climate change, we are experiencing high levels, like extreme levels of erosion on um, a lot of our native lands in Bristol Bay and along coastlines, including Southwest. Um, right now in ho at home, we had a lot of snow, but it gave way to rain, which is not normal. Um, just further, you know, tells us that our, our, our environment is changing and getting the funding and the necessary um, help to our tribes to address these kinds of impacts and how that is changing our subsistence ways um, is really needed and definitely a um, big need within our region. Gayla, would you like to add? Yeah, I guess um, one of the big issues of, of our region that affects this whole state of Alaska and um, America and the world is um, the proposed Pebble Mine um, project that we've been fighting for about two decades and the effects that this has had on the people within the region and the tribes that are within our region and the people of Alaska has been quite a, a battle for us to go through. And so when I asked the question earlier to the, 
to the elder who was in the room about that fire that's within us. You know, we all have that fire and that spark that is within us. And sometimes we're coals and sometimes we're a blazing fire. And it's just to to keep that fire going within us because, you know, there's times and challenges as we come across some of the issues that we do work on that you get to burnout levels and you get to, you know, different wide varieties of emotions as we're trying to protect the environment. So bringing these issues to our talk and getting the support from our talk and then bringing the issues to the national level. And um, I just want to re-emphasize to keep um, keep in mind those of you who are on the phone, I mean on the on the phone, on the on the Zoom, um, that we're gonna have uh, Pebble webinars that are going to be coming out again and we'll we'll do every effort to get um, to get that word out for people to participate on that webinar to actually understand the process of what we're going through because I think a lot of times when EPA or any federal agency or anything that we need to go through throw this throws out this information to us and we have to go through public comment periods and this could kind of just be in general overall with um, with what we do and trying to interpret what what is being done what is being said how do we use our voices to make our voices heard whether or not these are good projects in our backyards and um, the pebble webinars are coming up tribes take advantage of the fact that we could have meaningful government to government tribal consultations on this issue because the main thing that we really want to do is we want to um you know get this get the permanent protections for our watershed there in bristol bay so i think for our region and for this for the state and the nation is um, pebble is a really big issue that affects all of us so thank you I wanted to mention a little bit about the Copper Valley where I was born and raised with the Atna people. Um, we're, we're facing similar erosion to our to our neighbors on the coast too. Our rivers are eroding at rapid rates, so that's a big concern of ours. With the permafrost, and that's a frozen layer of ground within our surface of Alaska, um, that's changing with this changing climate, and we're losing that in large sections. We don't have lined landfills in the state of Alaska, so all of our villages and communities are surrounded by unlined landfills. As that protective air layer of light ice goes away, um, we have to think about that waste stream and how that's going to affect the, the life and health of our people. So that's a big concern that I, that I think about and our people think about um, quite a bit. Uh, a big concern for ours is the temperature of the rivers. Our Copper River, and I'm sure a lot of you have heard of the Copper River Red Salmon. The Copper River is where the Atna people have built their lives for since the beginning of time, for over 10,000 years. Um, we're not getting our fish back to the rates that we're used to. The, the international fishing fleets are decimating the fish, the fish before they get to us. The changes in water temperatures, we're only a couple degrees away from having inhospitable water for a salmon. So that sense of the insecurity that causes within our people um, is drastic. I think that has to be something we factor in. Um, it changes our lives. I thought about listening to Gala yesterday in our National Tribal Operations Committee meeting talk about Bristol Bay and I thought of my elders back home that have passed and never saw resolution to some of these issues and I'm sure you have people back home in Dillingham in that area that have passed on never knowing if that would be protected or if their their legacy would have those resources and that's a horrible feeling to think about so i those are big concerns probably statewide i know my neighbors on the coast uh, the sea ice is changing that's affected all the migration patterns the hunting the gathering um, for subsistence life so uh, we have a lot of issues but we have friends here with us colleagues from the rest of the nation from region 10 too would you guys like to share today Oh, yes. Is there any more questions? Or? Yeah, there is. There's another question about, um, Brandy would like to know what one thing EPA could do that would help folks the most. And then we have another question after that. Uh, I would just say um, environmental protection agency has been established and uh, they confirmed all the, the agreements they did. Uh, 1984, and then the pollution has been going on ever 
for a long, long, long time, and it's pretty sad. We should be able to drink out of the rivers, and uh, Bristol Bay should be able to drink out. I seen that. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure what it was, 60 minutes or something. They were on a boat, took a cup of water and drank out of it. And then we don't. That's that's still that's awesome. Why would you want to destroy something so beautiful, water of life? And then the, it's going to come down here, the lower 48, and then it's going to be like that up there. And if EPA don't step up, and the others out there, not just them. That's what they're letting their, their title means, Environmental Protection Agency. So I hope they need to get more powerful. Then the different administrations come in. You know, at the beginning, way back in the day, whoever was the executive director, or I'm the executive president, was in there calling the shots, would hire the cronies and, hey, hey, you help me, his brother-in-law or somebody, you, you run this. And holy, what, what, what kind of corruption is that? And then... That's what happened in the past. And then, so finally, they said, hey, hey, we got to get professionals in there. And all these things happened. And then, uh, next thing you know, a different administration comes in and takes it out again. All these laws and acts implemented and set aside regulations. Hey, 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 follow them. The Endangered Species Act, and the Clean Water Act, the Clean Air Act, it goes on and on and on and on. And then they're, 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 being, they're not being followed by the, the, this, the, the mining companies from 1872 mining law. So they can run however they want to do it. And they got the people backing them up for the states, different states, uh, people calling the shots because billions and billions of dollars and so things like that. So I'd like the EPA to turn around and they stay consistent, keep that stability going, no matter if a different uh, president comes from the red or whatever, they got to stay. That's what EPA needs to do, stay powerful, go down fighting like Ukrainians are. Thank you. What was the, sec the next question? The next question is, what can our talk do to keep? Oh, I just moved it on. Um, uh, to keep uh, fish consumption rates fresh in the Alaska DEC mines, so that it does not keep getting swept under the rug. I'll say hey, a little I, bit. I, oh, go ahead, Bill. You go ahead. I, I was just going to put a couple of words, and I'm not a scientist. I'm, I'm a local guy from Bush, Alaska, that was elected to be here and help Alaskans. But I, I feel sometimes these fish consumption rates can be dis misleading, and the information, if it's not accurate, can hurt our people. Because the, the, the people that want to take those rights and those foods away from our indigenous people will use bad information and, and misleading numbers to their benefit. If they can prove that the people in Bristol Bay don't consume very much salmon, then there's not as much need to protect that salmon. So we need to be careful. And then for my region, I don't want to see those numbers based off what our people consume now because we don't have any fish anymore. So I want, to, I want our numbers to be based off what they needed to live 50 years ago. That's our consumption rate that we want to get back to. So as they develop these race, rates and the scientists set these things up, think about our historical data and not our present data because we're in a crisis right now in some parts of the world for fish. Thank you. May I please just to, keep, uh, to add to that and, and thank you for your for your comments, Bill, and the question, Michael. Um, just wanted to mention that uh, <clears throat> uh, tribes need to continue to push the EPA to keep um, Alaska accountable uh, for those fish consumption rates. Um, so it's, you know, essentially the tribes have to do this. And our talk, our position essentially is to help educate and bring that to the forefront to tribes. And uh, we are here as a conduit or um, information, if you will, to, to help in that process. But essentially all that power comes back to the tribes and like, and the, and the great work that you've done, Michael, um, you guys in uh, Seldovia. Um, I think this is something that tribes need to pick back up. Um, and it's something I know that in Southeast we're, we're looking at doing again. We, we tried to make a good push on that and unfortunately it, did, it didn't gain any traction, but it comes back to the tribes to continue to push the EPA as stated and um, bring, that, bring that credible science that you guys did. You guys were a great model uh, for tribes in Alaska to kind of follow and, and establish um, a program to, to conduct fish consumption rates. Um, Alaska is a super complex area and how that will look. Uh, we don't know if it's gonna be split up by region, what fish are gonna be allowed, but if we provide 
some science behind it, we may have a stronger voice in um, being able to address that. So good question, Michael. I think it still has yet to be um, ironed out, but you guys kind of were uh, the leaders in essentially creating a model. And I think it's something that we all need to step up and do again as tribes. Awesome, thank you all so much. And we appreciate all the comments and all your work for our talk. And we are gonna go ahead and move on to our next presentation.